Jared Coleman Jones is a 6'10 senior forward from Jacksonville, Florida, who can score, rebound, and distribute. And most importantly, now is an Aztec. I thought we needed size and strength. We needed to add that with Ladine graduating. And I think Jared is a perfect fit for that. He's versatile. He's got an ability to shoot the three. He's got an explosive first step for a guy his size. And yet he can really score on the block. So Jared's biggest adjustment is going to come at the defensive end, like most guys that join our program. But offensively, I think he's ready to go in and, and be a major contributor uh, in his final season of basketball. All right, with new Aztec, Jared Coleman-Jones. How do you see your game, and how can you collectively work with each other to continue to improve and, and help this team win? You know, I feel like I'm a stretch big, but, like, you know, if I need to get physical, I will get physical. But at the end of the day, it's just about playing basketball and being a basketball player. You know, I just feel like I'm a basketball player, so. What do you think of this group, specifically the forwards and the centers? I mean, you got serious size here mm -hmm. at San Diego State. Forwards like Farrell Compton, obviously Miles Heidi is back. Yes. Magoon entering his second year redshirt last year. You have Thok Majak as well, uh, and others. What, what do you think of this group overall? You know, everybody is, is so talented. It's like, it's like, honestly, like, I'm an older guy now. So really watching these guys and, and seeing, like, me, like, you know, he has two years left. And he has, like, his whole college troop career ahead of him. It's like... It's incredible to see those guys, like all of them really have like special talents and they have they have drive, like and we all push each other. Like every day at practice is always us pushing each other, you know, us trying to make each other better. Even when we play one on one and we get to talking to each other a little bit, talking stuff to each other. It's like it's all love though. Like, you know, all of the guys super talented. And I like super excited to work with them every day. I want to switch back to your schooling. You talked about the importance academically when you chose Northwestern. You've got a college degree. You're here yeah. at San Diego State pursuing, I think, a master's in education. Yeah. Can you speak on that academic journey as well as your athletic journey and what you hope to do after your basketball days are over, whether it's collegiately, professionally, otherwise, what do you hope to accomplish um, with your degrees? So I really want to get into mental health, uh, the mental health profession. I just really want to help specifically student athletes, but I'm you know, I'm fine with helping anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, you know, ever since my injury, I've been to, through two injuries. So my sophomore year of high school, I did the same thing to both knees. Sophomore year of high school, sophomore year of college. And uh, it just really showed me, like, sometimes how, you know, we hinge, hinge, our, hinge ourselves on what we do instead of just who we are. And, and it kind of, like, eats, eats away at you mentally. So I think I want to give people a chance to just really, and I know there's already chances out there, but like, you know, just for me, I want to give people a chance to really like tell their stories and, and really like get it out there, you know, be, be transparent about their feelings. You know, don't feel like since you're an athlete, you have to be mentally tough all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, there's times where you can be safe and just like, you know, let it out. So I feel like that's what's most important, just getting that message across. And that's what I want to do with, with my masters, you know, just set, set things up where I can really mainstream that message to, to, you know, athletes can get it out. Athletes are human too, so. Is it true in high school you averaged a double-double? Or, excuse me, a triple-double in yeah, high school? Yeah, my senior year, my senior year. Average, and you were on arguably the nation's best team, right? 32-0? and 0. Yeah. All kinds of Division One athletes on that team. What was that experience like? It's one of the best teams I played on in terms of just everybody, everybody knew their role, but there was nothing to it. So like, we had shooters, you know, you know, I protected the rim and, and, and played on the inside hard. And we had Sharif Cooper, he was our point guard, he was our maestro. And Isaac Okoro, he's our enforcer. So like both me and Isaac were the enforcers. Uh, Sharif ran the show and it was like, it was fun. Off the court, you know, we were so jailed and we spent all our time together. It was just like a, like in high school, you're spending all your time with all your teammates. And it's like, those are all my best friends. So it was just like, it's really cool to, to be a part of a, a team like that. To average a triple double with blocks means you must have had a career. What's do you have any idea what your career high block number was for a game? It must Se be seventeen. Seventeen. Wow. <laughs> seventeen blocks. You remember yeah. the game specifically? Uh, Peachtree Ridge quarterfinals of the state playoffs. Wow. Georgia. Seven day. Yeah. Seventeen blocks. It's yeah. a big number. How do you see your role on this team as a veteran player, but so much youth, specifically in the front court, with guys that maybe have one year of college basketball or redshirted or are freshmen? Uh, what role do you play in helping bring those players along? 
obviously having a lot of experience in college basketball, you know, I was a freshman at once and I was that guy that never played a game in college basketball mm -hmm. before. So it's like, it's a little different when you do get in your first game because it's nerve wracking. Like for any player, even if you're super talented, it's nerve wracking. So like my thing is, it's just, you know, trying to help them be as comfortable in their games as possible. I mean, obviously the coaches do that and we put in a lot of work, but you know, I just want them to be comfortable in what they're doing. Comfortable with missing a shot. Like it's okay to miss a shot. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to like, like having all, the, all those anxieties flushed away because like it's basketball, you know, it's a lot of law of averages. You miss two shots, the next two shots will go in. So really just like continuing to, to be positive with them, you know, cause I'm new here, but like it's, it's easy to, because once you feel like someone cares about you and someone wants what's best for you and it's genuine, cause genuinely I want what's best for my whole front court. Like everybody that I'm playing with, I want to see, I, I want to see them do their best because like, it's going to help me be my best. I'm playing against your best every day. I'm going to be my best. So it's like, come on, like have fun with it, you know, lock in. It's like, I'm not mad at you. It's just, I want to see you be great, you know, cause I want to see myself be great. So. Why wouldn't I want to see the people around me? Great. It's a great answer. Derek Coleman-Jones, welcome to the Mesa. Thanks for taking time for us.